All right, kiddos. I've been having issues with my camera here. So if this doesn't work, boy, there's going to be a... <laughs> Hi, welcome to my uh, little cave. And you're going to do a video lesson like it's uh, 2020 all over again. Sorry, but we're going to do this the same way we do always in class. Difference is, every time I say pause, you're actually going to pause it. And you're going to do the thing. When you're done doing the thing, you're going to press play and then I'm here. And in the meantime, I'm going to sit here awkwardly for about three or four seconds, assuming that you actually did that. So, we start with, like any other day, daily quiz. Pause it. Solve that for all the zeros. And I'll assume that you actually did that. So, if I have any long chain polynomial, the easiest way to do it, although it is factorable, but it requires a little bit of, and uh, we didn't exactly have that the other day, I'm just going to do synthetic division. So I'm going to say 2, negative 5, 7, 2, negative 12. And I'm going to gaze into my crystal ball and see what do I feel really, really lucky about. And in this case, I feel really lucky about negative 1. Oh, wait. 2. Because I stared at my screen. Or, I don't know, I used the rational root theorem and then Descartes' law of signs. And then guessed and checked. And then did the boundary theorem. And I landed at negative 1. So, negative 1 by 2 is negative 2, negative 7. Multiply them, get 7, get 14 when I add them. Negative 1 by 14 is negative 14. Add them, I get negative 12. Negative 1, negative 12 is a positive 12. Yay! It worked, I guessed really well. And then I set up another set of synthetic division because this one worked so well. And I'm going to try, you know, I feel really good about three halves for some reason. I just, I got a good feeling. And I turn that into half of two is one times three is three. Add them together, negative four. Half of negative four is negative two times three is negative six. Add them together, I get eight. Half of 8 is 4. 4 by 3 is 12. Oh, look at that. It worked again. I'm so good at guessing. Now, at this point, I'm down to a quadratic. Now, remember, what this just said was... Here, let's switch over to a different color. We've got to have colors even when we're doing this manually, right? This is the factor x plus 1. This is the factor x minus 3 halves. That's why this 2 is still here. So if I want to turn that into 2x minus 3 instead, that's why I would divide all these by 2. See, it's a difference if I'm just looking for the zeros versus I'm looking for factors. Okay? So we'll call this 1, negative 2, 4 instead, which is the quadratic. x squared minus 2, x plus 4 is 0. And last I checked, there were no factors of 4 that added up to negative 2. So I have to head to either complete the square or quadratic formula. You all know that I'm a fan of complete the square more than anything else. So I got x squared minus 2x. I'll shove that 4 over to the other side. Half of negative 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. So I add 1 to both sides. Getting the quantity x minus 1 squared is negative 3. Solved by square roots. Getting x minus 1 is plus or minus i root of 3. And finally, add the 1 over. You should have x is negative 1, 
three halves. See, it didn't again. It did it again. Just hang on a second here. Poke. Poke. I don't know why something's going on with my camera here where it's, uh, it keeps freezing on me. Um, three halves, and now we know one plus or minus i root of three. Okay, so point wise, did you do synthetic division? Did you guess very well? Did you get to the correct quadratic? Did you solve the quadratic correctly? And then we'll leave one floating for I did the dumb. And it did it again. All right, reset, come on. <sighs> Sorry kiddos, if this does this one more time, um, I'm just gonna link old videos and you're gonna have to deal with me in class from last semester. So, there is your daily quiz. If you had any questions, you should have shot them to me on Remind. And now we're headed for our notes. We last left off at... There we go. So, uh, depending which class we were in, our factoring went kind of south on us because um, in the midst of sleep deprivation, I forgot that factoring cortics that are not already set up for grouping and need the split term there, there's an algorithm for it that I had just kind of been bypassing by doing numbers in my head, and sleep deprivation means that algorithm didn't work because the numbers got a little tougher. Um, so there are things that you can factor, but those weren't one of them. Now they can be factored, but it's a little more advanced um, method that you'll pick up later, like college math. And um, these, they really just want us to do synthetic division into a quadratic formula. So um, the last parts of this are going to be based off of fundamental theorem of algebra, which is kind of this um, reverse engineered. See, if I know that this thing is degree four, it's going to have four zeros. They can be real, they can be imaginary, they can be um, rational, irrational, all that kind of stuff, right? And if I know the zeros, then I can make the linear factors. So I can also do that backwards, where if I know the factors, or I know the zeros, I can make the factors. If I know the factors, I can make the equation. And this idea that I can go forwards and backwards from zeros to equation or equation to zeros they um, they unlock a lot of doors later in math and we first learned this in algebra 2 how to take a single zero and I suppose I should uh, make this bigger right I can take a single zero And if I know that it has a conjugate, like things that have plus or minus a radical, then I know another zero that goes with it. So the idea behind it is, okay, camera's still working, good. Conjugate roots. Camera's just a little crooked here, but I'm honestly just terrified of touching it. Um, if I know that a plus bi is a zero, then I know its conjugate is also a zero. Um, for example, if five plus seven i is a zero, then I know that five minus seven i is zero. The only way that I'm getting an i is a square root of a negative one. And if I had a square root, I must have done plus or minus. Same thing goes for any radical. And when I say square root of b, I literally mean any radical, so not just within the radical. Example, if it's one plus 2 square root of 7. Okay, the entirety of this would be my b. If that's 1, then I know that 1 minus 2 root of 7 is. 
Now this also goes for, um, I'm only changing the sign in the middle, that's what makes it a conjugate. So say it's negative 1 plus square root of 3, then it's negative 1 minus square root of 3. If it's negative 3 halves plus or minus 5 over 7i. Okay, I'm just making up numbers. Then it's negative 3 halves plus 5 over 7i. I don't change the sign on a, only on b. Okay, so those are my conjugate roots. So we got the little tired wired meaning here, right? See, if I know this is a zero, the way that the book wants us to do this, the way that every Algebra 2 book I've ever seen, every pre-calc book I've ever seen, the way they always teach this is, just like if 5 is a 0, I know x minus 5 is a linear factor. That's because x minus the 0 is how I make linear factors. Then this is x minus 2 minus i root of 3. And its conjugate will also have a 0 of 2 plus i root of 3. And then you have to go distribution bonkers on it. So first, I distribute my negative into there, getting x minus 2 plus i root of 3 times x minus 2 minus i root of 3. And then I have to distribute all that. So we're going to have x times all this stuff. Got you. Ugg mad at camera. Ugg break camera in half. All right. If I take x times all this stuff, we're going to have x squared minus 2x minus i root of 3x. Okay. If I take negative 2 times all that stuff, we'll have a negative 2x, and I'll write it here to keep things lined up. A negative 2 and a negative 2 is a positive 4. I'll write it out here because it doesn't line up with any of the other terms. Negative 2 and negative i root of 3 is positive 2i root of 3. I'm like, boy, that looks spread out. There's a reason. Then I'll take i root of 3 times all this stuff. i root of 3 times x is plus i root of 3x. Or you could say it's i x root of 3 or any combination thereof. They're all usually at the back of the term. Um, we're going to have this times a negative 2 is negative 2i root of 3. And this times this is a negative i squared times regular 3. So the book wants us to do this every time that we have either a plus bi or a plus radical b. Every time. And like I said I've never seen this in a textbook, but every Algebra 2 and above math teacher worth their salt shows kids the formula. See, you notice here, I'll have two of these terms. These terms will cancel. These terms will cancel. I squared is a negative 1, so I'll really have 4 plus 3, which if you notice, 4 is this guy squared, 3 is this guy squared, and there's my quadratic that made it. So I'll take this idea that, well, conjugates, we've used conjugates before to make sure that the nasty stuff disappears. What if I did it to the general form? Watch what happens. I will again say, here's my zero, right? Got an imaginary part to it, complex number. And we'll write that as x minus a plus bi 
its conjugate, x minus a minus bi. If I distribute again, getting x minus a minus bi, x minus a plus bi, and then go distribution bonkers on this, x times all the stuff, x squared minus ax plus bix, negative a times all the stuff is a negative ax, a positive a squared, a negative abi, I should have moved this over, um, negative bi times the stuff, negative bix, a positive abi, abi, and a negative bi times a bi is a negative b squared i squared. Look at what happens again. On the general form of any one of these, I'm going to have x squared, two of my a term times x, so negative 2ax, cancel, cancel, the first term squared, the i squared will change my sign to a plus b squared, and this collectively, a squared plus b squared, is going to be my constant term. So imagine I took this and didn't want to do any of this work. And I just used cheater formula. x squared minus 2ax plus a squared plus b squared. a is 2, 2, and b is square root of 3. I'd get x squared minus 4x, 4 plus 3 is 7 done. Avoid all this work. Okay? This is how the book is going to show it. This is how the solutions show it. This may even be the way that you were taught to do it in Algebra 2. But the formula is something that most math teachers will show their students. So what I would like you to write down is if I have a plus bi, a complex zero, the quadratic that made it is x squared minus 2ax plus a squared plus b squared. Okay, now remember b is the coefficient of i. It isn't b and then i. Don't put i in the parentheses, just the thing in front of it. Also, whether it's plus or minus doesn't matter because you notice the only times we had b, it either canceled or it got squared. So whether there's a positive or negative there doesn't matter. It's always going to end up positive. And then if I have a plus radical b, again, if I say radical b, I mean, it can be just the square root of 3, it can be an entire 2 root of 13, okay? So whatever the radical term is, it's going to do all of this same stuff, except there won't be any i's. So the only thing that's going to change is I won't have an i squared here to change the sign. So it's x squared minus 2ax plus a squared minus b squared. Those formulas. Whenever we have a complex or compound zero, I know it has a conjugate. If I know there's going to be conjugates, I know that when I multiply them together, ugly style, they will make these quadratics. So we're going to use that to cheat our way through the next how many problems. Okay, I'm going to pause this. I need a drink. Okay, it's a video lesson. I should probably clarify. I need a drink of water.
You've got to be careful what you say on YouTube, right? So, uh, your notes. If you go on to example six, again, you should have example six right in front of you. So I'm content just writing on paper like this. <clears throat> if I know these three zeros, make the polynomial they came from. So, sorry, I'm a little off frame here. I know x plus 2 is a linear factor. I know x minus 4 is a linear factor. And again, the way the book wants you to do this is they would like you to now say x minus 3 minus i, x minus 3 plus i, and then x, x minus 3 plus i times x minus 3 minus i, and then go distribution bonkers on it, saying x squared minus 3x minus ix minus 3x plus 9 my plus 3i minus plus ix minus 3i minus i squared uh, x squared minus 6x cancel cancel 9 plus 1 is 10. They want you to do all of that. I say no. We ain't doing any of that. Instead, next to this, you're going to write x squared minus 2a x plus a squared plus b squared. And in there goes a is your real term. B is the coefficient of i, in this case, negative 1. And, lo and behold, oh, I'm also going to distribute these while I'm at it. That's x squared minus 4x plus 2x is minus 2x when I combine like terms. And then, x squared minus 6x, 9 plus 1, is 10. Okay, so again, this is all I need to see because we're gonna work smarter, not harder. I don't need to do any of this because I got the formula that's gonna cheat my way through. Okay, now I do still have to distribute the last part of this. I do still have quadratic times quadratic. So, x squared times x squared, x squared times negative 6, x squared times 10, and then negative 2x times the stuff is negative 2x to the third plus 12x squared minus 20x, negative 8 times the stuff is negative 8x squared plus 48x minus 80 for a final answer of the function that created these zeros is x to the fourth minus 8x to the third. Come on, Ben. Um, so let's add 14. 14x squared. Come on. Plus... 28x minus 80. There you go. Now, if I'm not sure that that's correct, I can always reverse engineer 1, negative 8, 14, 28, negative 80, and I can check is negative 2 actually a 0 of this? Negative 2, negative 10 positive 20, 34, negative 68, negative 40, positive 80, I win. And you go again. Does 4 work? 1, 4, negative 6, negative 24, negative 10, 40. And look at that quadratic. Oh, wait, that's positive. Sorry that quadratic exactly what we had.
Now, I don't need to see any of this. You don't need to see my hand all up close like that. Look at those scars, man. Um, I just need to see. Here's my linear zeros. Here's my formula to make my quadratic. Multiply those, I'm done. Okay? So, we're going to start off fairly small. Okay? I want you to start with just 6a. This is one multiplicity of two. Okay? Okay, it's right there in your notes. It says multiplicity of two. So I'm going to have one, two, three, four, conjugate, five zeros. You better have a quintet when you're all done. Pause, work with your neighbors, give it a try. So it should look like x plus 3, x minus 1, x minus 1 again. We go yell at our camera. Come on, you. Okay. All right, now this one. I could go use that cheater. In this case, I would have x squared minus 2, a is 0. And a is 0. And b is 4. But all this stuff in the middle doesn't matter. Right? I'm just going to get x squared plus 16. So if we had just recognized the only way to get 4i is if I have plus or minus 4i, then that came from x squared plus 16. Okay? So you could use a cheater, you could have long-handed it, however you're going to do it. Now I just have to do a lot of distribution. Hopefully my pen will actually work here. Okay? Um, hmm. Tell you what. I'll multiply these two together because um, a thing squared has its own property of square it, multiply and double, square it. My pen, I think my pen's actually dying here. Okay, that gets rid of those two. I'll distribute these two while I'm at it. x times x squared is so x to the third x times 16 is 16x, 3 times x squared is 3x squared, and 3 times 16 is 48. Okay, so that's those two. I ain't out in the woods yet, I still have to distribute those. So, x squared times all the stuff. You notice when I do this, I want to keep things lined up by like terms because it makes uh, combining like terms later a lot easier. x squared times 16x to the third and 48x squared. So when I move on to the next term, I have negative 2x to the fourth under that column. Negative 2x times stuff. 6x to the third, negative 32x squared, and negative 96x. Then, 1 times the stuff. x to the third, 3x squared, 16x, 48. Combine like terms. The function that created this was x to the fifth plus x to the fourth plus 11x to the third, and what's that, 16, 3, 19x squared, minus 80x plus 48. I don't have to check it, but if you're not sure, maybe some of the numbers got a little wonky on you, then by all means, take this with synthetic division, with negative 3, 1, 1, and your quadratic at the end should be x squared plus 16. Okay, now we're going to head over to radical and conjugate land. When they say 2 root of 3 and negative 2 root of 3, don't make the conjugate for both of them. 
they just wrote the conjugate with it. So, th like this together makes one quadratic. This and its conjugate will make another quadratic. So, do it again. Pause. Work it through. Check with your neighbor. Check in with me. All right. <clears throat> so, here I've got x squared minus. Again, this is 0 plus 2 root of 3 in terms of rational and irrational. So 2ax plus a squared minus, because it's going to be a non-i um, quadratic, 2 root of 3 squared. That gets me x squared, remember when I square a radical with both a coefficient and radicand, square the outside is 4, square the inside is 3, 4 times 3 is 12. For the other one, I have x squared minus 2, a is 1, x plus a squared, plus, because now we're dealing with i's, the coefficient of this is 1. Remember, don't put the i in there. The i squared is what changed the sign on me. And then simplify it. x squared minus 2x plus 2. And you notice again, this was something where we didn't have factors of 2 that add up to negative 2. So I would have to go to the quadratic formula or complete the square. So it kind of confirms that that's ugly thing came from ugly quadratic. So I now have x squared minus 12 times x squared minus 2x plus 2. Go ahead and multiply those through. x squared times all the stuff is x to the fourth minus 2x to the third plus 2x squared. Negative 12 times all the stuff is negative 12x squared plus 24x minus 24. Polynomial that made it. x to the fourth minus 2x to the third minus 10x squared plus 24x minus 24. Okay, so those of you that really liked Algebra 1, Algebra 2 instead of Geometry, you just liked number crunching, moving things around then, yeah, this is probably your jam. But boy, are there a lot of moving parts. So you just have to slow down and be careful. 99% um, of cases when kids goof these up, it's literally a sign. Um, maybe kids will goof the sign here, which changes this last column of numbers which changes these last three in their answer. So it'll look like they got it horribly wrong, but it was literally just, I missed a negative somewhere up here. So please show every scrap of your work, slow down, be careful with your, uh, with your arithmetic. Use a calculator, double check numbers if you have to, because I can give you credit for that. You goof up here, domino affecting the whole problem. I still call that a 4 out of 5. Okay, so we move over here, our thumb pages. Now, every year I show this problem and every year kids mess their huggies. Chill out. First, I want you to pause and Ask your neighbor if you can figure out what A and B are. Okay. Again, they gave me the conjugate. If I rewrite that as 1 half plus square root of 11 over 2i, don't you just have A and B right there? Jam them into your formula. 
they have one, negative one, and oh, they did it again. They gave me the conjugate with it. So these two, every year, I know that we need to practice these. I want you to pause, do these two that are already on your paper. And hopefully you did. <clears throat> we should have over here x plus 5 the quadratic x squared minus when I take 2a 2 times a half is 1 x plus here I'll just write it up here x squared minus 2a x plus a squared plus b squared. God, this pen's kind of dying on me too. Okay. One half squared is one quarter. Squared of eleven over two squared is eleven quarters. One quarter and eleven quarters is twelve quarters is three. So it turns out, big, bad, ugly, oh no, how dare he make us do this, wasn't that big of a deal. Take x times the stuff, x to the third, minus x squared, plus 3x, 5 times the stuff. 5x squared, minus 5x, plus 15. All together, x to the third, 4x squared, minus 2x plus 15. Not that bad. Okay. This one, I have x plus 1, x minus 1, which makes a real nice quadratic of just x squared minus 1. Over here, x squared minus 2a, x plus a squared plus, even though it has a radical, it's a radical i, so I'm going to use plus, square root of 3 squared, which is just x squared plus 3. Foil those out, we all know what foil means now, x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. 3x squared minus x squared is 2x squared. Negative 1 by 3 is negative 3. So, what I'm going to have you do is, if you feel confident on that, go ahead. If you're done, great. Otherwise, pause it and work through these, and I'll be here with an answer when you're ready. told you I'd do it. Check through my work, check through my arithmetic, go ahead and pause it and look through everything. Um, we have a non-i radical, so we're going to use the minus in our formula. We have an i radical, we're going to use plus in our formula. Getting these two quadratics, multiply these two quadratics, getting big honk and quartic still have that linear factor to multiply by that and hopefully after four nights straight of being woken up two or more times I have the mental math capacity to do that. So again pause it, try it, I'll do it again. Ta-da! Look we did it. Again Plug it in, use minus because we have a uh, non-i radical. Use plus because we have an i radical. Get your two quadratics, distribute your two quadratics, combine like terms. So again, those are just practice if you need them. Then we got two examples left, and honestly, this is the, t the rougher stuff. Example seven is if I know 
uh, if I can do my synthetic division down to irreducible quadratic, if I can do that stuff, then, well, we need to talk about that term. I've mentioned it a few times, irreducible quadratic. Irreducible quadratic means it has real roots. It'll actually factor into um, not just real, but rational roots. Um, you don't have to go to radical down. So if I'm going to factor this, first thing I'm doing is gazing into my crystal ball. So pull out your graphing calculator. OK, so sleep deprivation strikes again. I even need to break out my uh, graphing calculator double check things. We are going to feel very lucky about starting with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5. And we're going to go with 1, 0, negative 18, 30, negative 19, and 30. Remember that placeholder really matters. And drop it like a little, little bit hot there and get negative 5. 25, 7, negative 35, negative 5, 25 again, 6, and negative 30. I found 1, 0. I'm going to keep going in the chain. And then I feel really lucky about, oh, I don't know, 2. And get 2, negative 3, negative 6, 1. 2, negative 3, negative 6, done. Okay. Next up, I feel really lucky about, um, I don't know, 3, maybe, possibly, chance of, could be. 1, 3, 0. 0, 1, 3, done. Okay. So... I would do my rational root theorem, Descartes, law of signs, um, boundary theorem, as I'm guessing and checking, I'd, I'd use all that, or I'd just guess really, really good. And I would get down to x squared plus 1. So, um, right up there, right in your notes, it says, write that as a product of linear and irreducible quadratic factors. So that means I'm going to write this as k of x is x plus 5, x minus 2, x minus 3, and then because x squared plus 1 has imaginary roots, it's considered a irreducible quadratic. Part B says, as a product of linear factors, we've really belabored the uh, wording there in the past. Um, then, if I want linear factorization, then all that stuff is the same. But when I get here, I would either take it out by the shed and get plus or minus i by square roots, or I would factor by sum of squares into x plus i, x minus i. Now it's linear factorization versus irreducible quadratic and linear. And then finally it says, tell me, what are the zeros? Negative 5, 2, 3, plus or minus i. Okay. Um, while we're here, I wanted to talk about this one and you know, we had the factoring kind of go awry on us the other day, but y'all, this is factorable. Okay. Rearrange it. Can you see quadratic form in there? Go ahead. Pause it and chat with your neighbor. If I rearrange this as x to the fifth, minus 18x to the third, bring this guy over, negative 19x, and then shove that 
30x squared plus 30 over here. So I didn't have to split any terms. I was just able to rearrange it. Now, if I factor out an x, I see a quadratic form. I'll factor quadratic form into x squared minus 19, x squared plus 1. Here, I'll factor out a 30, leaving an x squared plus 1. They both have an x squared plus 1. I'll take it out. So I'm left with this. I'll distribute the x back in while I'm at it, and 30. x to the third minus 19x plus 30. Okay, now this part I would have to split. And then I would go again, okay? But this idea that if I had a bunch of rational zeros and then one irreducible quadratic factor, which I found, I could just factor this part. But the higher order polynomials do get tougher. So I won't belabor that point, but I just want to show you um, if you can see that it does work. What I'd like you to do is pause and for both of these same directions, write linear factors and irreducible quadratics, then all linear factors, and then solve. Um, I'm also pretty sure that both of these will factor nicely, I think, without splitting them, but slightly cross-eyed again, so maybe I'm wrong. If you want the challenge, try them by factoring, but I'll go through them by uh, synthetic division first. Pause, do the thing. Okay, first one I feel oh so lucky about a negative 6 and a positive 5. I set up synthetic 1, 1, negative 26, 4, negative 120. And I will try my hand with negative 6. 1, negative 6, negative 5, 30, 4, negative 24, negative 20, and a positive 120. I will try again, but this time I feel lucky about a 5. Getting 5, 0, 0, 4, 20, gone. And we should recognize that by now. First round f of x as linear factors, x plus 6, x minus 5, remember those are the zeros, not the factors, and we'll have the irreducible quadratic x squared plus 4. If I want that in pure linear, x plus 6, x minus 5, x plus 2i, x minus 2i, and finally it's zeros, negative 6, negative 5, plus or minus 2i. Try again for 7b. And I'm pausing so I can double check over here. Okay, here we go. I feel very lucky about trying a negative 3. Hmm, really? Yeah, because then we have a negative 45, positive 105. Oh, wait, what did we miss? Negative 3, negative 5, positive 15, positive 13, negative 39, negative 45, positive 105, 6. 
is that actually negative 3? See, this is what happens when you don't double check things beforehand. Now you got to pause and actually run it because that's not 105. That's 12135. So that's 36. So that's a negative 108. It's been a rough week, y'all. And then I'm going to go again. Except this time I feel really lucky about. We have to unlock our phone because we forgot. One. Don't you always feel silly when it's one? Um, we got one, negative four, negative four, nine, nine, negative 36, and 36, it works. When you get down here, when you get to this cortic, do you see how it would factor? Take out a nine, it'd be an x minus four. Take out an x squared, it'd be an x minus four. I hope you're seeing it. Um, I'm going to try one more time. One, two, three, four, with one, four, zero, zero, nine, thirty-six. My f of x, written with linear, x plus three, x minus one, x minus four, and irreducible quadratic, x squared plus nine. If I turn that into linear and only linear, then I have to turn this into x plus 3i, x minus 3i. And those give me my zeros. Negative 3, 1, 4, plus or minus 3i. Okay. If you want to try your hand at the factoring, not necessary, 100% not necessary. If you don't want to do by factoring, then don't skip this part, okay? But I am going to throw it out there for those who want it. Factoring by grouping. You look for quadratic form. x to the fourth minus 26x squared minus 120 and x to the third plus 4x. This guy turns into x squared minus 6 x squared minus 20. Oh wait. Is that supposed to be plus 120? Minus 120. Oh, negative 30 and 4. There we go. Negative 30, positive 4. And take out an x, x squared plus 4. They both have an x squared plus 4 in common leaving a x squared, an x, and a negative 30. Both of these are factorable in turn. Here it's x plus 2i, x minus 2i. Here it's x plus 6, x minus 5. Okay. Same thing. This one got a little more oomph to it. I'm going to look for a pair of quadratic forms since I have six terms. x to the fifth minus 2x to the third minus 99x goes together. Negative 2x to the fourth minus 6x squared plus 108 will go together. Here I take out first an x. You see how it'll be x to the fourth, x squared. 99. I'm going to turn into x squared minus 11, x squared plus 9. Here I take out a negative 2, <clears throat> and I'll 
have a x squared plus 3, or sorry, x fourth, 3x squared minus 54. Factors of 54 that add up to negative 54 that add up to 3. This one will be x squared plus 9, x squared minus 6. Now this one's going to get a little dice here because when I take out my x squared plus 9, I kind of have to undo some of the work I've already done by distributing into it. So here I have x to the third minus 11x. Here I have negative 2x squared plus 12. Okay. And you see again, this one just looks a little weird. It's not going to factor nicely as is. Can you think of a way to split a term so that it will factor by grouping again? I had to think for a second there. The way that I'll break this up is x to the third minus 2x squared plus 1x. So this would turn into a negative 12x plus 12. You see it now? Here I take out an x, leaving x squared minus 2 plus 1, which is the quantity x minus 1 squared. Here I'll take out a negative 12, which gives me x minus 1. They have an x minus 1 in common, leaving x times x minus 1, so x squared minus x, minus 12. And finally, you know, Liu Kang is sitting there wobbling, finish him. x plus 3i, x minus 3i, x minus 1. Factors of negative 12 that add up to negative 1, x minus 4, x plus 3. And my camera died again. Poke, 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 poke. When what we'd really like to do is uppercut him. Okay. Check your factors. Check your zeros. You want to get real good with factoring and numeracy. Pick these big long polynomials and see if you can find the magic number that splits in order to continue factoring. And you have to kind of undo your work a few times by redistributing. Not necessary, but it's a skill that you might find handy. Okay, the very last thing is example 8 where now we're going to know what one of our zeros is, and I say go find the other ones. This is why we had to know long division, not just synthetic. See, if I know this, then I'm going to use my cheater. I don't want to do things longhand. This is already a long enough video. 2ax plus a squared plus b squared x squared minus 4x, 4 plus 9 is 13. So if I've got one of my zeros, and it's a uh, compound or complex, then I can use my conjugate theorem, and I can get a quadratic that made it. This is 2 degrees, 
This represents two of my zeros. This is a quartic. If I take a quartic and divide it by a quadratic, I will get another quadratic, which I know how to deal with quadratics. I can quadratic formula complete the square. So I'm going to do long honk and division on it. x squared minus 4x plus 13 as a divisor into x to the fourth minus 6x to the third plus 20x squared minus 22x minus 13. Long division, x to the fourth divided by the thing is x squared. x squared times the stuff, x to the fourth minus 4x to the third plus 13x squared. But I'm going to change the signs. Getting negative 2x to the third plus 7x squared, drop it, little hot, negative 22x. And I go again. Negative 2x to the third divided by x squared. So negative 2x. Negative 2x times the stuff is negative 2x to the third, 8x squared, and a negative 26x. But I will change the signs getting negative x squared plus 4x minus 13. And those numbers should look awful familiar. Negative x squared divided by x squared is negative 1. Getting negative x squared 4x negative 13. Change the signs. If I know one of the zeros and it's conjugate, I get a quadratic. A quartic divided by a quadratic is another quadratic. That quadratic can be solved by complete the square or quadratic formula. Half of negative 2 is 1. I'll add 1 to both sides. Calling this x minus 1 the quantity squared is 2 solved by square roots. x minus 1 is plus or minus square root of 2. So x is 1 plus or minus square root of 2 and 2 plus or minus 3i. So down here, a and b. I have a compound root so I can get its quadratic, I can divide and get a quadratic. I have a compound root, I can get its quadratic, divide by the quadratic, get a quadratic. Solve those. I don't see a need to do both of them. What I'll do is just uh, you pick one if you want to do both because you need to check things. Then I will in stages uh, pause and unpause and have work there for you to check. So. Go ahead and pause and do A if you want. Okay, so there's round one. Number one error. Kids will miss that sign because there's no I there. Do your dividing, get your quadratic, solve your quadratic. If you want it, round two. There it is. So, you get again. Find your quadratic, divide by your quadratic, solve your quadratic. We spent so much time on quadratics for so many years. And I think this one lesson, all three days of it, really pounded that home. Why you needed to know quadratics to come up into pre -cal. So that is the end of the road. If you need to do more, honestly, there's the problems. They're in your notes. Go and do the thing. Screenshot it. Send it to me. I'm too tired to keep going. And this video is long enough as it is. So, best of luck to you. Ask questions before Monday. And I'll see you then. Hopefully.